A couple more of your real memorable pictures. Uh, the men with Marlon Brando, uh, Jack Webb, and the great Fred Zinnemann, and really a, a, a great movie that holds up about uh, paraplegic veterans readjusting to society in 1950. What was that experience like in getting to know Marlon? Well, there was nobody out here knew him at that point. He had done Streetcar in New York on the stage. Yeah. But this, The Men, was his first movie. Correct. And he did it because of Stanley Kramer, who was, had quite a track record of doing the, you know, adventures of films. Right. And um, I was sent out to uh, the Birmingham Hospital. Mm -hmm. And when Marlon and I both stayed there for off and on for a week. That was out in the valley. In that's Van out Nuys. in the valley. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, we st stayed with the paraplegics. Mm -hmm. And well, there's that's that famous story about him when we went out. One afternoon, uh, Marlon said, "We're going to go over to the the shack. Or the, the, what was it a restaurant?" He said, "We're going to have some drinks with the guys, okay?" Mm -hmm. He said, "But we're going to go in wheelchairs with them, and we're going to pass. We're going to be we, 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 wheelchair people too." So you're going to be with the with the with the paralyzed veterans, really. But That's you're right. also going to be in wheelchairs. And That's right. It. And we did that, and, and we went, and we went to this place, and we sat down and had drinks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the marvelous thing happened. A crazy woman came over, and we're all sitting there in our chairs, and she said. Uh, you boys are paraplegics, aren't you? Mm -hmm. and nobody said anything much, and Marlon sort of winced. And she said, that means you can't walk, can you? You can't, you, 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 you can't get out of those chairs, can you? <laughs> and he goes, it's getting pretty, pretty annoying, and here these poor guys are. And I didn't know what to say. And finally she said, you, you know, you could walk right now if you wanted to. She picked Marlon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a perfect setup. <laughs> Marlon Brando said, ladies, just leave me alone. She said, I've got my own worries, you know. <laughs> He's playing Marlon. <laughs> and he said, you, you could walk. You could stand right up in that chair right now. You try. And Marlon said, you mean I could walk out of here? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yes. He said, I'll try. And he, and he grabbed his chair. And he starts struggling. And he gets up. And she's cheering him on. She said, keep doing it. You can make it. You can make it. <laughs> he got up and he went, oh. You humiliated me. Ah. And she said, no, try again. And eventually he sweetened it and he pulled and he got, he got up, he ran him in the room, did a little jig and ran out of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty cute, Mr. Yeah. Brando. <laughs> but uh, Marlon sounds like, at least in those days, he was a pretty fun-loving regular fellow. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah he, he lived with me. Um, I had a little apartment on Hollywood Boulevard. Because I was a friend of the Adler family, and they had trained in right. Marlon. Right. Still, I had actually, mm -hmm. and uh, and he couldn't have been nicer. Mm -hmm. Sharon, he came to see us years, years later when mm -hmm. uh, Sharon and I were together. Yeah. And uh, remember, he, we spent the whole evening wanting to hear certain kinds of opera that I had because he he, he liked that kind of music, and, and I did too. Right. I think at this point yeah. we should also introduce uh, Dick's better half for 58 years, uh, who at one time in her life went to school with Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney and stayed on the right side of the desk opposite Louis B. Mayer, Sharon Erdman, who is here with us tonight. I think they're getting hungry and thirsty out there. Yeah, well, one more, one more thing. Uh, I think if, if certain movies, and you and I have talked about this, when you're changing the channel on TV and you have TCM on or something, and you see Casablanca, you stop. And you see the Maltese Falcon, you're gonna stop and look at it. And one of those movies that you're in most memorably is Stalag 17. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, I, I mean, we can, we can go on for a long time on that and other things, but just a quick Billy Wilder. What was the Billy Wilder experience like on that movie? Well, by the time we got around to doing that movie, he had just come through with two or three big, big hits, you know. Right. Double Indemnity, uh, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, Sunset and, Boulevard. And, and he, uh, anyhow, my agent, Ingo Preminger. Uh, Otto's <laughs> brother. Otto's brother. <laughs> uh, took me in to meet Mr. Wilder. Right. And Wilder took one look at me, and he said, yeah, he said, no laughs. <laughs> and I said, he said, no laughs. We have no laughs from you. And I said, well, why that? He said, no, no, not one little laugh. 
because you are the glue that holds this together. You get no laughs. Everybody else is funny, but not you. So he just trying to tell me to play it straight and not go for it. Anyhow, about, about the sixth, seventh week of the shoot, he suddenly in the middle of a take, Wilder said, cut, cut. If you do it again, Erdman got a titter. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very witty fellow. Yeah. Very, very, very shrewd. Smart. And, yeah. And how did he work with Otto? I guess Otto, you know, in a different role than director, the oh. actor. And he was, Otto was just perfect. Oh, I know. Well, yeah. was, that was a big day. When did we see Billy direct his bro brother? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it went very well, of course. Cause, right. Because Otto is a pro. And yeah. Yeah. It, it, so now, after a career, as you said, I think uh, Mr. Skeffington was 68 years ago, my God, and, sorry, and uh, uh, here it is, you're now still working and you're a, a regular role on Community for yeah. three years. Yeah. Um, uh, life goes on and the phone keeps ringing and uh, you come by and drink all my wine and it's just <laughs> I plead guilty to that so uh, is community is this going to be renewed for a fourth year or is the jury still out we're waiting to hear yeah yeah know. yeah last story how did you come to direct the Dick Van Dyke show oh well I wanted to direct for a long long time and I directed plays I drink but I thought I want to get into television I want to direct the best show that we've got, which was the Dick Van Dyke show at that right, point. Right. And Sharon will tell you, I didn't stop. I went down and sat in the set every morning from 9.30 until 6 o'clock at night for six months. They, they put, now, now, the executive producer was an old-time actor who became one of the great producers in television history with I Spy and other shows, Sheldon Leonard. Right, right. And I had, uh, when Sheldon first got going, he had written a radio show, which was a one-man show. And it got made into a movie, and I was added as a character, and he, and he was scared to death because he'd written this thing. He said, I, I've written it, but I can't play it. Uh -huh. And I said, come on, I, I, I may beat him through it. And, and, and anyhow, he never forgot that. And, uh, and he said, uh, no, no promises. He said, just uh, you, you can come and you can observe as much as you like. And, right. and anyhow, I, I observed for all that time. And suddenly one morning, Sharon said, tell him. And then it was uh, Sheldon. He said, you're going to direct the next two shows. Wow. And I said, well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you, thank yeah, you. Yeah. And so and I did, and it went very, very well. Thank yeah. heaven. I think one of those shows was the, uh, for those people who remember that show, was Maury Amsterdam getting bar mitzvah oh, yeah. at age 59, <laughs> which was really a classic. Well, Dick, I, I went to Maury when we got that script, and I said, Maury, I said, this is a strange one. You know, I'm, I'm directing the Dick Dan Van Dyke show, but it's the Maury Amsterdam show, I, I think, and I've got news for you. And he said, what? Well, I said, I don't think we're going to get a laugh in the first 20 minutes. And oh, he really? said, are you kidding? I said, no, look at it. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think so. And I was right, as a matter of fact. But then it, it went exploded, but yeah. there, there were no jokes. It was so a setup. It was Everybody a setup thought right. Maury Amsterdam was screwing somebody. That's what they thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, we could go on and on uh, as we do, but Dick, uh, you've really made the inaugural evening of the 12th annual uh, Arthur Lyons Fillmore Festival a special event. It's been a pleasure. Oh, the movie was terrific. You're terrific. Oh, and thank you. uh, we all pray that the phone keeps on ringing and yes. those residuals keep on coming. You betcha. All right. Thank you so much. Put it together for Mr. Dick Erdman. Thank you very much and see you 10 a.m. tomorrow for I Love Trouble. Thank you.